Well, I guess I've got some catching up to do. Okay. Greetings, valued player. Oh, hi, Ian. Hi. So I just thought I'd come and let you know that you are a valued player. And we're just really excited that you're here. Oh, hey, I heard you like customization options, so have some customization options. Oh, wow. Thanks, Ian. That's really great. You know how dedicated we are to always giving the player what they want. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, I heard you like conduit energy. Not really, no. I meant you don't like conduit energy. Well, that's gone now. Ooh. Here's interchangeable covenants. Nice. Here's an invincible to ride made out of gold. Here's a really nice cake that I baked you. Oh, thanks, Ian. That's really generous. Honestly, I only logged in to put my hunter outside the raid entrance for later. We'll put a portal to the raid entrance. Oh, cool. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I totally think that's something that we can do. Yeah, we can do whatever you want, because we treasure you very, very much. Can I play with some of my horde friends when I'm playing Alliance? Get the hell out of here and never come back. Knowledge is power. Hello, Internet. Taliesin here, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Reset, Taliesin and Evertel's Wondrous Wisdom Show, in a week where we have the first PTR build of patch 9.15. And do you remember last week when we were talking about how Blizz were answering all of our prayers and wishes and stuff? And I don't know if you do, we had a very awesome some magic lamp graphic, the production values were off the chart. And do you remember that I drew special attention to various Team 2 dev tweets that mentioned there was lots more to come? Well, it turns out that was no exaggeration because it feels like Every day at the moment, and especially with the initial patch notes that came out this week, Blizzard really are bending over backwards to essentially grant every long-standing want and fix every niggling gripe about Shadowlands. The AoE cap is gone in 9.15 to be replaced by reduced damage to targets over that cap amount, which is obviously massive news, and along with covenant switching and conduit energy, a major sign that for the first time in living memory, Blizzard may be willing to go against their own stubborn adherence to their design philosophy in order to charm its players. And quite frankly, if the AoE cap can be removed mid-expansion, then honestly, all bets are off. Anything could be on the table from here on in. Oh, I forgot to put anything on the table. I think we could be about three blue posts away from player housing and Blizzard giving out daily massages to all of its players. Although now I think about it, maybe I'll pass on the massages there, guys. Thanks. Oh yeah, don't forget, Blizzard the corporation is big and evil and faceless and explosive exploits and mistreats its workers, and which still has not responded to employee demands for more transparency and representation in the wake of its almighty discrimination and harassment case, which they simultaneously deny ever happened, and also apologize for and promise to be better. Seriously, screw Activision Blizzard King, screw anyone who extracts profit from stuff just through virtue of owning it without adding value with their own labor, just in case you'd forgotten all that. Something which doesn't, of course, apply to anyone actually making the games, and who have given us plenty to look at this week. And let's start with what is actually there in the PTR and testable right now, like the new customization options. Much has been made of the fact that players are finally able to create classic Alliance High Elf characters as Void Elves get new blonde and brown and red hair color options and the ability to remove or keep the glowing purple tentacle things and wait, those are tentacles. Void Elves have tentacles growing out of their heads. Oh god, why? Aleria doesn't have tentacles growing out of her head. And why just specifically their heads? Ooh. Okay, look, clearly I never thought too much about it, and it looks like I was right not to. And anyway, you can remove them now. And create the blue-eyed, not purple-skinned, blonde-haired High Elf of your dreams. Rats. But the option for Nightborn and Lightforge Draenei are actually really good too, including chunky beard and jewelry options for Draenei to go with really splendid new horn choices, and Nightborn, well, they actually look like the Nightborn from the game World of Warcraft now, something which really shouldn't be a pleasant surprise, but really is, especially as Wowhead have been busy data mining new items from the upcoming Legion Timewalking vendor, which include the previously unavailable Nightborn 
some glowy weapons of Suramarian awesomeness, like the Arc Shield and the Arc Saber, and loads of other things called Arc. And yes, Nightborn still lacked the ability to have cool glowy hands using the Legion glowy hand effect, which made everything in Legion so awesome and glowy, and that is an absolute travesty as far as I'm concerned, but fine. This is very good work, thank you. The other big testable feature on the PTR right now is the new leveling improvements, including the ability to, at last, skip the opening more scenario. And all you have to do to do that is talk to Darian Mograine at the very beginning of the questline in Stormwind or Ogrimmar and click on the usual I've heard this tale before option, you will be teleported straight to Oribos and your choice between Shadowlands story progression or Threads of Fate. One thing though you should probably be aware, you don't actually have any reason or prompt to otherwise click on Darian Mograine to find that out. You accept the quest off of a different NPC and when you do, Darian just starts talking and then F's off through the portal to Ice Crown. And if he does that, like if you let him leave Stormwind or Ogrimmar before skipping the more intro scenario, then the more intro has already started and you can't skip it anymore. Added to the fact that even if you do click on him, Darian is walking away from you as he says all this stuff, which altogether makes accidentally failing to skip the more scenario like hilariously easy. A potential problem which I would absolutely report on the PTR, but as you all know, I ain't no snitch. Something I was very excited to check out though, the new option to use Torghast as a way to level in Threads of Fate, alongside side and daily quests in the Covenant Zones. And like I said last week, this is something I have been crying out for since the alpha of Shadowlands, because I think in many ways, leveling through Torghast could be one of the purest expressions of what makes Torghast so great in the first place. So you better believe that I was right on that PTR to test this out and I can reveal to you internet that Torghast in Threads of Fate is a really terrible way to level. Like really bad at the moment because currently you can enter a special level one version of the two available weekly wings of Torghast as much as you like but the XP that you get from just killing stuff in there is pretty negligible so from a leveling point of view your main XP comes from a daily quest that a broker gives you to complete both wings once. I hope you're thinking about how long it takes to do a wing of Torghast at the moment. Hold that thought. Good. And when you have completed both of those wings that Oscar Pistol glorious looking mofo gives you the exact same XP as doing a daily quest. One daily quest's worth of XP for two Torghast wings once a day. You do get one renown from each wing twice a day and soul ash too so it absolutely does have its perks and yeah I was right being in Torghast and constantly being in combat and being made to think about your abilities and how they interact with each other when anima powers change them is actually an amazing way of leveling and getting to grips with a class that you might be new to or out of practice with but realistically at the moment you can't level exclusively through Torghast you can't level even slightly through Torghast and yeah this is PTR or all that needs to happen is that someone needs to point out to Blizzard that that daily needs to reward considerably higher XP than one single world quest and it'll be a lot better. I'd do it myself, but I ain't no snitch. There's also new weather effects in Ogrimmar and Stormwind, and not just on the PTR. Players are reporting that the new thunderstorm effect is currently visible in the live game too. I haven't seen it. I logged in and the weather was just normal and I stayed there for like 10 minutes and it stayed normal. So I don't know if we're gonna have any footage to show you here. I kind of wish I'd never mentioned it. There's also the new high res starting armor sets for fresh level one characters, which means that the old starting sets are disappearing from the game in 915. You know, just in case you wanted to make sure that you've got hold of any of those that you wanted. There are still a lot of key features that haven't shown up on the PTR yet, of course, like the legendary scrapping system, which Blizz have clarified will return you 100% of the soul ash and soul cinders that you spent to make the legendary, but not your sweet, sweet expensive base piece items. So, good news crafters, you are still absolutely making bank in 915. There's the four new druid forms, which Wowhead have data mined as being moth form, stag form, bat form, and raven form. So you can finally travel just like everyone's favorite druids, Medivh and Khadgar. Ah, who can forget the zany adventures of those famous druid bros, Medivh and Khadgar, flying around as druid ravens and getting into all kinds of 
crazy druid scrapes together. Don't forget to starfall, Khadgar! The new covenant swapping hasn't found its way in there yet, and conduit energy is still absolutely there, like a bad smell or a bit of broccoli stuck in your teeth. There's still no extra flight points in the moor, but an undocumented change, which I feel compelled to point out to you because I will genuinely sleep better and happier tonight because of it, when you take your covenant portal to Ouroboros now, it takes you straight to the portal room of the Eternal City and not the outside front door. I'm just like incredibly happy about this. And yes, over the years, my bar for being incredibly happy might have been lowered somewhat, but I am incredibly happy about this. This is like that bit of wood in Boralis in front of the mission table ship all over again. I love it. And then there's the Legion Mythic Plus that we were talking about last week, which also isn't testable on the PTR yet, but which Blizzard have clarified more details of, such as the dungeons that will feature, and yay, Court of Stars! Boo, Eye of Ashara. Shame, no Karazhan. There's the time-walking vendor items, like the Nightborn weapons that we saw earlier, but also the Aegis of Agrimar. A new color variant of the Legion Hippogriff data mined new color versions of the Mythic sets from Tomb of Sargeras, which might be connected to Legion Mythic Plus, or maybe Tomb of Sargeras is coming with time walking. They haven't mentioned that, so I'm going to assume it's Mythic Plus, and either way, that is very cool. A new Infernal Mythic Plus affix has been data mined specifically for Legion Mythic Plus dungeons, and based on associated spells that Wowhead have also found, it looks like there are going to be three different commanders in each dungeon who summon wrath guards and fell hounds, spider mobs, or eridar mobs. So basically, three of the main enemy groups from Legion. And I'm just really excited thinking about all the cool glowy hands and feet. Sorry, I loved that Legion glowy hand and feet effect. And then, of course, there's the rewards. As a blue post this week confirmed that completing Legion Mythic Plus dungeons will count towards your Great Vault total, even though only current Shadowlands loot will appear in your vault every week. But not only that, Legion Mythic Plus dungeons will drop loot from their original loot tables, and that loot will be upgradable with Valor. Which, I mean, I guess we know why Arcway isn't on the dungeon list now, because a 246 gnarled thumb ring is giving me nightmares just thinking about it. But there is still plenty of other loot, especially trinkets, that presumably will be dropping, like Moonlit Prison and Faulty Countermeasure, and this is simultaneously absolutely brilliant and incredibly concerning. It's brilliant because, as I've long said to anyone that will listen, one of the biggest problems that I have with Mythic Plus over the course of an entire expansion is not just the repetitive nature of the relatively small amount of current dungeons to run, but also the fact that their loot tables stay the same every season, which means that many players find themselves refarming the same Biss items that they are already wearing, just a higher item level at the start of every season, which I think totally sucks. And having Legion dungeons in the Mythic Plus pool will absolutely help with both of those problems, doubling the amount of available dungeons, but also the amount of loot tables. And that is really fun. Except, and I'm sure you have already spotted this exact same problem because you're very clever people that watch this show fair play, but the time limited nature of time walking means that if any players do have best in slot items that appear in a legion dungeon, and we don't know if that's the case until we see the scaling on these items and someone much cleverer but probably with a less splendid jacket than me does some sims on them, but if they do, then those lucky players that need those items have two weeks to loot that item the first time legion time walking happens and one other week at a time a couple of times a year otherwise, and that's not ideal, is it? I'm no expert, but I think that's going to cause some shit shows. And if you don't believe me, well, actually, I lied about not being an expert, because in fact, I totally am an expert, and I'm telling you, that's going to cause some shit shows. Obviously, like, plain as day. More obvious than Domination Shards not being a fun idea level obvious. And the fix is obvious, isn't it? Not having the loot drop? or be unupgradable? No, screw that, that sounds like fun, and I am totally here for that. No, if the problem is the time-limited nature of the time-walking events, then just have Legion Mythic Plus dungeons be a permanent feature of Mythic Plus forever, and BFA dungeons too while we're at it. And yes, I know I said this last week, but it's even more true now with this week's clarifications on how these dungeons will work. Can I see why Blizzard absolutely don't want to do that? Yes, of course, as well as eroding the excitement of time-walking as a limited and occasional event, it also cheapens the relevancy of current dungeons and also commits the team to 
basically keeping all Mythic Plus dungeons in the game every new expansion, which will eventually lead to outrageous instance and loot table bloat and take away excitement of new dungeons being introduced in a new expansion. I get that, of course I do. Do I care? No, not really. Give me all of those dungeons! Okay, yeah, I do care a little bit, I guess. If you are going to keep it as a Time Walking exclusive, then we should probably start looking into how much work it would be to give all existing Time Walking dungeons a Mythic Plus version, so that at least there always are non-Shadowlands options, whatever the week is. My guess is that would be an astronomical amount of work. So I don't know what the answer is, but I hope they do find a way to make this happen in a way that's going to keep the excitement of new slash old dungeons and loot in the weekly Mythic Plus routine, while not making players feel cheated if they miss the loot that they needed in the very small window that they had to get it. Because it's just such an exciting idea that I'd hate to see ruined by, you know, reality. Oh, also just a side note, but there was a mini stir of excitement this week because the Legion Time Walking event is in the in-game calendar on the PTR, starting on November the 2nd, which would mean, of course, that 9.15 would have to have been released before then. It's even got the promised two-week duration for its first time through. So, will we have this new half-patch before November? Shit, I hope so. Like, I really hope so. Probably yes. But that doesn't really have anything to do with the reveal on the calendar, which could be completely random or could be incredibly accurate. Look, what I'm saying is, if 9.15 isn't live by November the 2nd, then we've all got bigger problems than whether the PTR calendar was right or not. It does kind of hammer home as well, though, that 2021 really is going to be a year with only one major patch for World of Warcraft, isn't it? Huh. Also, and this isn't so unrelated, but if we're going to be doing Legion Mythic Plus, where's our Time Walking Mage Tower, Blizz? And there we have it, a veritable treasure trove of stuff Loads on the PTR. Of shiz. Already with more stuff to come. In fact, no. that's not even all. I didn't have time to put it all in the script. Bit. No. But there's been other things as well. Such as? Not specifically on the PTR, okay. but there has been like movements in, in blizzards. Okay. Bow movements kind of thing. So I don't know if you remember the Rumbles, Hearthsteed. Rumbles, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, more than the rumble. I don't know if you remember the Hearthsteed mount. I, oh, uh, how um, could do you remember I forget? When we first started dating, in I fact, did. and first started playing WoW together, because Hearthstone had just released at the time. Right. I had to play, like, a certain amount of Hearthstone, yep. and I got the Hearthsteed mount. I remember. And then I didn't play Hearthstone again ever again in my entire life. You did not. I did, though. Yeah, totally. Love Hearthstone. Oh, how much do you love Hearthstone? I mean, I hate it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I haven't touched it in years because it, like, it literally triggers rage. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it literally makes me so angry when I lose. Well, good but news. Then, yeah. <laughs> because oh, tell me more. You, if you play some more Hearthstone oh, now, really? more. as part of their new game mode, uh, you get a in-game mount, and it's a mouse. That's cute. Are you cute enough to play some Hearthstone? Ah, uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, look, listen, the wins, when you win, it's so good. Yeah, especially but, when you've got a mouse. But when you lose, it's so bad. But you've still got a mouse. So, like, the payoff is really great, but the price you pay is also enormous. At mm. least for me, I clearly have a problem with that. Well, okay, stone. so maybe you won't, be getting, you won't be getting the mouse mount then, but how maybe about, not. now bear with me, how about some of the new uh, store purchases that have been data mined by Wowhead? Um, they've got like, kind of like collections of various store mounts and stuff, most of yeah. which you've already got because you've got a six month sub, That's but awesome. there's also a picture of what appears to be a new transmog as part of the moon bundle. The, the glowy one. Because I know you've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV recently. Recently. I have you just been. got to the end of ARR uh, and uh, on stream, which is very emotional. You go through, but you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. obviously, in the fine, in Final Fantasy fourteen, you get transmogs on the store all the time. Love so it. how about a transmog for WoW on the store? Fine. Well, it, because everyone likes Final Fantasy fourteen now, no one's upset about that at all. Certainly. No, and that, no. everyone's really happy about it and thinks Absolutely. it's a really good idea. Right. As a shit show, obviously. Yeah. And in today's fish that nobody asked for, make players happy, then slap them on the face with trash microtransactions. So many good things lately, and they just had to ruin it. A surprise <laughs> shit show segment in the middle of the sofa bit. We've well, never done a shit show in the in the sofa before. I mean, I don't, I don't know about <laughs> you. We've never but... done it on the sofa before, <laughs> and here we are. Yeah, no, people think it's a terrible idea, but we'll wait and see until it's actually in the game, eh? I'm in a strange situation where obviously I think it's bad, but also I just don't really care. I know, right? I know. Oh, I cannot build up the energy. Oh, speaking <laughs> of things that you have no energy to be angry about, oh uh, in the PTR this week, another thing that they did do was get rid of the slash spit emote. That is gone. It's gone. How much do you care? <sighs> Don't you feel like your freedom of speech is being impinged? Yes, absolutely. Don't you feel like 
they had the choice between solving all of the issues at their company and game, mm -hmm. or removing the slash spit emote, and, and they, they chose, chose to just release, just get rid of the slash spit emote, well, therefore clearly, leaving everything else unsolved. Clearly, I just can't believe they made that decision. <laughs> I'm so annoyed with them for making that decision. So what happens if I try to write it? You won't be able to, like slash emote. Yeah. I spit on blah blah blah. Yeah. Uh, but you can't do Fine. that cross faction. Okay. Um, and also, it's a lot of effort, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with the slash spit emote, right? Like in isolation, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Uh, the fact is, it is how people were using it. Yeah, it's it, like a toy that was used in a way that it should not. Have been. Yeah, yeah. Toy it's, makes it sound a bit more fun than it actually is. It reminds me of like. Um, the Naga thing. Do you remember the Naga thing, mm, uh, yeah. which was like a big thing on like yeah. streams for a while, yeah. where people were using the word Naga as a replacement for a highly offensive and racist, racist word. Right. So like, they banned use of the word Naga, mm -hmm. um, like on Makes sense. Uh, in in stream chat for a while. Yeah. And like, yeah, exactly. And like, no one's saying that the word Naga is wrong. No. Like, you know, we need it for when we go to Najatar and stuff like that. <laughs> but when people start purposely misusing it to cause others harm, yeah. then that's why we can't have nice thing. Maybe Blizzard will bring a new emote onto the shop. A new slash spit emote onto the onto the store. <laughs> I thought emotes on stores were okay now. Could you? I imagine? bought them in FF14. I bought Could emotes on stores. I, I'm just saying, if you really, really want to spit on someone, you'll pay the money, right? We will keep Hurrah. you updated. And in the meantime, why don't you check out some of the amazing Wowhead articles in the description below, Damn which it. have like more details than any of the rubbish we just told you on on this channel. But thank you for joining us, though. If you like this episode, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real life money to make all of our videos they happen. Do. And guys, seriously. Thank you, because without you, there'd be a whole lot less Tally S and Everton. We should record a, a Patreon Q&A. We should, let's do it this week. <laughs> let's do it this week. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. And remember, my name is Samaya. Oh. No, my name is Tally S and... And from me. And from me. Wait, I messed that up. I know. You should have done that. Who messed it up? You I messed it up. Pretty you... sure you no, messed no, it up. No, no, no. You, you were supposed to go from me. And from me, I'm know, always the. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know why I messed it up? And from me, why? Yeah, it's because I was thinking about the rock and roll racing toys that got dated. Oh my god! Oh my about. god! So good. They're fine. Cheerio. <laughs>